Lesson 21 David and Jonathan And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father. 18, reading 1 Samuel 18, 19 and 20 Objective To show us the basis of true and lasting friendship. To illustrate the evil of jealousy by looking at Saul's attitude to David. To demonstrate how probation must go before exaltation. Background Having defeated Goliath and still carrying the head of the Philistine champion in his hand, David was taken to speak with Saul. 1 Samuel 17 verses 57 to 58. The events of this lesson happened immediately after their conversation. David and Jonathan became lifelong friends. 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 to 4. Jonathan was deeply affected when David displayed such an absolute faith in God in his victory over Goliath. This was the same faith and courage that Jonathan himself had shown on an earlier occasion when he single-handedly attacked a Philistine garrison. 1 Samuel 14 verse 6 This basis of mutual trust and love of God formed one of the closest friendships in the Bible. The soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 1 Samuel 18 verse 1 A short time later, Jonathan and David entered into a covenant of friendship. Jonathan gave David his royal robe, his armour, his sword, his special weapon of the bow and his girdle. Verse 3 Although heir to the throne of Saul, he gave away these symbols of his right to the throne to David recognising him as the anointed king. Jonathan acknowledged that God had prepared a person greater than himself to rule the people and showed no envy or jealousy to Yahweh's anointed. He esteemed other better than himself. Philippians 2 verse 3 Saul's love for David turns to hate. 1 Samuel 18 verses 5 to 11 With God's help, David went from strength to strength. Saul appointed David captain of his army. David was accepted by the army, the people and Saul's servants. No one seemed resentful or jealous of him. Verse 5 And even Saul loved him greatly. 1 Samuel 16 verse 1 21. As David came home with the victorious Israelites, the women of Israel came out to meet him, dancing and singing. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Chapter 18 verse 7. Samuel had made it plain to Saul that Yahweh would rend the kingdom from him and give it to a neighbour better than he. Compare chapter 13 verses 13 to 14 and chapter 15 verse 28. The prophecies suddenly became more real. Saul put the words of Samuel together with the events before his eyes and came to a conclusion. What can he have more but the kingdom? Chapter 18 verse 8. For years Saul had watched for the successor God said would come. He now was more and more suspicious that it was David, the people's favourite. Saul watched David from that day onwards. Verse 9 His love for David gradually began turning into hatred. As the thought that David would succeed him grew in his mind, Saul became more moody and tense. Saul quickly became very disturbed. As David played the harp to relieve Saul's depression, he suddenly lifted his javelin and hurled it at David, not once but twice. 
verses 10 to 11. Jealousy of other people is an ungodly characteristic. Jealousy is the rage of a man. Proverbs 6 verse 34. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Song of Solomon 8 verse 6. Jealousy is a result of discontentment, whereas godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6. Saul plots David's death. 1 Samuel 18 verses 12 to 30. Regardless of these threats to his life, David remains loyal to the king and stayed in his court. David behaved himself wisely and it was clear that Yahweh was with him, verse 14, and not with Saul. How could Saul get rid of David? Saul became so jealous of David that he made a plan whereby the Philistines would be David's executioners. The plan was to have David killed in battle. He offered David Mirab, his eldest daughter, to be his wife, on the condition that he be valiant and fight Yahweh's battles. Verse 17 When sent to the battlefield, David defeated the Philistines instead of being killed. However, when the time came for David to receive his reward, the marriage arrangement was dishonoured. Verse 19 Then Saul discovered that his younger daughter Michael loved David. Saul again plotted David's death by telling him that he could marry Michael if he slew a hundred Philistines. Verses 20 to 25 Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines, verse 25. But David slew 200 Philistines and married Michael, verses 26 to 27. Saul's hatred increased as even in the most difficult circumstances, David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was precious, verse 30. See the margin. Note the number of times in this chapter that David's wise and godly behaviour is mentioned, which made him highly esteemed. See verse 30 in the RSV version. By the people, but was a cause of increasing fear in Saul. Saul becomes a victim of his own pride. He refused to accept the will and actions of God. He knew that God was with David, verse 12 and verse 28, but would not grant him any respect or honour. Pride had blinded his eyes and he was the victim of envy, verse 8, anger, verse 11, and fear, verse 29. Jonathan pleads for David. 1 Samuel 19 verses 1 to 7 Saul revealed his feelings to Jonathan and to all his servants. They should kill David, verse 1. Jonathan, as a true friend, immediately warned David. He needed an opportunity to reason with his father and persuade him that his treatment of David was unfair. He spoke earnestly to his father of David's loyalty and faithfulness. Saul listened and made Jonathan a promise. As Yahweh liveth, he shall not be slain. Verse 6. Such an oath before God was binding. But Saul was not one to keep his word. So David returned to the court. Verse 7. And for a while everything settled down. Principle for living. Value of true friendship. The Bible tells us that both Saul and Jonathan loved David. 1 Samuel 16 verse 21 and 1 Samuel 18 verse 1. Saul's love, however, was shallow and selfish and did not stand the test of trial. Saul loved David for what he could do for Saul. Saul loved David because of his soothing music and his courage and ability in battle. However, true friends are those who like us for what we are and what we believe 
and not for what we can do for them. Jonathan's love for David was far different from Saul's. He knew David would be the future king and was glad. He willingly stepped aside. The basis of true friendship was a common love for the things of God. It was this that broke down the barriers of age, wealth and rank between Jonathan and David. He was a genuine friend who demonstrated the attitude Paul speaks of. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honour of preferring one another. Romans 12 verse 10 As David found with Jonathan, true friends will not fail us in times of trouble. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17 verse 17 Friends play a big part in our lives and they can influence us for good or evil. The friends we choose and the things that occupy our time should assist us to walk worthy before our God and not hinder our development as disciples of Christ. The wrong friendships can be bad for us. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 in the New King James Version We should choose our friends in the truth as our companions and be able to say, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. Psalms 119 verse 63 David flees to Samuel. 1 Samuel's 19 verses 8 to 24 Saul's hatred was becoming progressively worse. When David returned victorious for war, it was just too much for the king. He again tries to kill David with his javelin, but David fled from his presence. Verses 8 to 10 David went to his home, but Michael advised him to leave immediately and he escaped down through a window. After this she hid a image in David's bed. Saul sent men to David's house to take him, but Michael pretended that David was sick in bed. They returned with instructions to take him anyway, only to find the image. Michael alleged that David had in the meantime threatened her life so that she had no alternative but to let him go verses 12 to 17. Meanwhile, David fled to Samuel for comfort and instruction. They left the prophets home at Ramah and went to the school of the prophets at Naoth. But there was no peace for David there. When Saul learnt of his whereabouts, he sent messengers to take David. But the Spirit of God stopped them and they began prophesying. Three times this happened to Saul's men as God intervened to protect David. Then Saul went himself and the same thing happened to him as happened to his servants. Yahweh would not allow Saul to kill David. Comfort from Jonathan 1 Samuel 20 David returned to Gibeah and sought out Jonathan. He was amazed that Saul was so angry with him. What have I done? What is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Verse 1. Jonathan could not believe that his father would break his word and plan David's death. David was convinced. There is but a step between me and death. Verse 3. There is but a step between me and death. Verse 3. How could they find out Saul's attitude to David? David suggested that they test Saul's attitude. David would not attend the feast of the new moon with the excuse of attending a family feast at Bethlehem. Jonathan would assess his father's response to David's absence and let David know by the way he would shoot arrows in the field. Jonathan knew that David would be king and all he wanted was that David would continue to be kind to him and his children. On this basis they made a covenant between themselves. Verses 14 to 17 
the test of Saul's attitudes went into operation. On the first day, Saul assumed David was unclean. On the second day, Saul asked Jonathan why David wasn't there. Saul told Jonathan, Send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. Verses 30 to 31. Saul became so angry that he cast a javelin at his son. Jonathan left burning with fierce anger. Verse 34. The following morning, Jonathan followed the arranged sign. He shot his arrows long and David knew that it was a signal to flee. Full of grief, the two friends parted, confirming the covenant that they had made between themselves and God as their witness. Verse 42 David was now in exile, fleeing from the hatred of the king. Only once again did David and Jonathan briefly met when he sought to strengthen David as he fled from the army of Saul. Basic Bible Teaching Faith is Tested in Times of Trial In this period of David's life he faced great trials, but this was all in the knowledge and purpose of God. Why do people need such a severe testing of their faith? God could have created men as robots to do his will. However, that would not have satisfied God's character or brought him any honour. Instead, he gave us free will so that we can choose to serve and obey him. Such service is based on love and it is what God wants above all else. Our love is a response to his goodness. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 to 5, Mark 12 verses 29 to 30. God provides opportunities for us to demonstrate our faith and love. Character is developed when we are faced with situations which require us to choose right from wrong. God chooses these circumstances and making the right choice glorifies God. The wrong choice is sin. So life is a refining process which purges out our bad characteristics and brings out the image of Christ in characters that are being prepared for immortality. God uses different circumstances to develop the characters of his people. David the shepherd boy was being prepared for the highest honour as king of Israel. Psalms 78 verses 70 to 72 Even Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Hebrews 5 verse 8 No one can enter the kingdom without trials. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Acts 14 verse 22 Summary Jonathan loved David for his godliness and was content that it was God's will that David should be king after Saul. Saul initially loved David but became jealous of his popularity and jealousy soon turned to hatred and hatred to attempted murder. Jonathan remained true to David and was distressed that David had to flee from Saul's presence to save his life. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible2 at gmail.com and we look forward to you listening to the next lesson which will be called David in Exile.